trees, like any living thing, need water, proper nutrients, as well as general care and upkeep to stay alive and healthy. And while the city so far has evaded emerald ash borer, Dutch elm disease has been a presence in Bloomington for some time. Dutch elm disease is actually a fungus. Um, it's, some say it's been around since the 60s. Uh, the big time that everything kind of exploded was in the 70s. Uh, that's when we started to, to see a lot of the boulevard elms go and, and that's when uh, Minneapolis started dealing with it pretty heavily too. A slow spread from the tips of the branches to the roots eventually starved the tree of nutrients, ultimately killing it. And for more than 35 years, the city has had a program in place, the Tree Disease Management Program, identifying this issue. Through this program, city tree inspectors are on the lookout for diseased trees, while also fielding resident phone calls regarding trees showing symptoms of the disease. These symptoms include early color changes, flaky discolored bark, and... Uh, a lot of times you'll just see it at the very tip of a branch, um, some yellowing, um, and a lot of times the tips will kind of bend over and the leaves will curl. When a tree has been identified as having Dutch elm disease, more than likely that tree needs immediate removal, as leaving it up will continue the spread of Dutch elm. It can spread through root grafting, which is basically by two elm trees being close proximity and the two you know, trees kind of grow together a little bit and share that root system. Um, another way for that to spread is also by bark beetles. Uh, so what happens is the little bark beetles tunnel into the branches and get some of that fungus on their bodies and they fly to the next tree and tunnel in and that fungus can spread then through the system of the, of the new tree. This boulevard tree in West Bloomington has shaded this home since the 1960s, but Dutch elm disease has taken its toll. The first step for park maintenance tree removal crews is to send an employee up in the elevated basket seat where branches are strategically cut down. Bigger branches and limbs are taken from the side of the tree where it will eventually come down on. This essentially lessens the fall while assisting in a smooth takedown. Next, a chain is connected to a strong central limb and attached to a machine called a loader. A chainsaw operator on the ground then cuts a notch into the lower trunk of the tree on the side that is meant to be the direction of the fall. The scene is clear and timber The fallen tree is cut into pieces and the loader aids in picking up large branches and limbs. Jacobson says having this happen in your yard is unfortunate, but the most effective thing a resident can do to prevent it is simple. Homeowners just kind of being aware of what they have in their yard. You know, if you can identify which ones are elms and kind of know ahead of time uh, which ones to keep an eye on, uh, but just being aware when you notice uh, a spot that seems to be yellowing out or, or dropping leaves uh, prematurely, uh, to give a call and you know and and just ask if uh, if somebody would take another look at it. Should a diseased tree need removal on private property, responsibility is that of the homeowners. Identify your elm trees and keep an eye on them. This could ultimately help control the spread of Dutch elm disease. If you have questions, contact the Public Works Maintenance Division at 952-563-8760.